It's the biggest, fastest, most competitive racetrack in the world, Talladega Super Speedway. This is the kind of place where success is measured by who crosses the finish line first. Back in 1987, NASCAR driver Bill Elliott set the qualifying track record on this two and two third mile oval by circling it in less than 45 seconds. That's over 212 miles per hour. By any measure, Talladega is built for speed. The folks here at Talladega have a really unique way of measuring track length. On a typical race weekend, they sell over 12,000 pounds of hot dogs, and that's without buns and condiments. Now, if you laid those franks end to end, they would go around this two and two third mile track one and a quarter times. Now, while you can measure things with hot dogs, here at Talladega, they do have much more precise ways of measuring things. Your program's on measurement, and that's all NASCAR's about. You know, they measure everything in NASCAR. They're measuring their fuel. They're measuring the height of the cars, you know, the wear on the tires. You know, any, every little thing they do out there is measured, and each one of these cars that they bring here is built on a jig at their shops, and the measurements have to be exactly like the car they built each time before. So now our sport's all about measurement, whether it's the distance they run or the height of the car, the angle of the spoiler, you know, the size of the restrictor plate. The whole sport is basically based on engineering. This is the most competitive racetrack on the planet. We had 67 lead changes last year in our fall race. We're the first racetrack to ever get a thousand lead changes in one race, and we have the least number of opportunities to do that. This is a lot of walking. On this two and two thirty mile long trioval track, they've got a lot of real estate for some really grand grandstands. I mean, it's like they made up the word grandstand just for these stands. This mile-long monster holds 120,000 screaming NASCAR fans, and from here they can see the start-finish line, the flag stand, and the always exciting pit road. Well, we're standing here on long pit road. This is where the teams come in during the race, and each team is assigned a pit stall here. And you, you get to pick your pit stall in a NASCAR race by, again, a measurement. It's how fast you run and how fast you qualify, and then you start picking your pits from that off of the sheet. The teams have figured out at some tracks that you can leave faster if you're on that end of pit road and kind of get beyond the measurement quicker, where NASCAR is actually measuring you again. Okay. So sometimes they'll pick this end of pit road and sometimes they'll pick the far end, but almost always they'll pick an opening whether there isn't anybody in front of them or behind them. They can basically bring a car in, put 22 gallons of fuel in a car, change all four tires, and get them back on the track in around 14 seconds. Two measurements, the length of the track and how steeply it's banked, translate into extremely high racing speeds. Let's go find out why. Well, Mr. France Sr., Bill France Sr., decided he wanted to just build Daytona but make it just a little bit better. So what he did was he made it about two degrees steeper in the turns. Daytona's about 31, 29 to 31. He made it a good 12 feet wider throughout the turns. And NASCAR measures all of their tracks. When you hear a measurement of 2.66 miles, that is measured 15 feet off of the outside wall. So 15 feet off of the safer barrier you see up here, which is where they put a wheel on the track and actually measure the distance around the track. Oh, see, because it would be a actually shorter track if you measure the inside and a longer track if you measure the outside. That's right. Even though during qualifying they run down here, the, the distance is actually measured up here, and that's at every racetrack, not just Talladega. So we're standing here leading into turn four, and that is one seriously banked wall. What's the angle up there? The angle here is almost 33 degrees. Uh, it's not quite 33 here in turn four. It does hit the 33 degree range down in turn two. And we're standing on what we call the truck lane right here. This is where the emergency equipment would ride around during race time. And it's actually 18 degrees, which is steeper than many racetracks. It's hard enough standing here. Yeah, this is this is almost impossible. If you, if you walk up here, you can just see how going up here just becomes really difficult because of the very steepness of the banking and it is the steepest bank race track in the world. Well, obviously the 33 degree banking allows the cars to carry more speed. And when the track was first built, it was known as the speed track and it still is to this day. But it's one of the two tracks in NASCAR where they actually use restrictor plates over the carburetors, which restrict the amount of air that flows into the engine, which keeps the speeds down. Well, how much, how much air do they have to cut out to make that work? Well, you can actually take 1 64th of a smaller hole at the top of the carburetor and that will take out of the engine between 15 and 18 horsepower just by cutting the hole down 1 64th. So whereas a normal NASCAR engine might be producing in the range of 750 horsepower with the restrictor plates they place on them here at Talladega, those numbers drop down into the high 500s. So we're standing on this hugely banked 
corner here. What would happen if this was just flattened out? If it was this wide, but there was no bank to it, whatever, how would they, how would that change the nature of the race? Well, first, you wouldn't have to have the restrict plates, which slows them down anyway. Uh, flatter tracks, two mile tracks, such as California or Michigan, where they don't run restrictor plates, they're in the 188 range or so on speeds. If, it, if you took the restrictor plate off here, as we talked earlier, they'd be in the 220s or so. But so if you flatten it out, the first thing you do is you get rid of the restrictor plates, and then hopefully uh, you'd keep the top competition level, what it always is here at Talladega, but you might not, and that's why we've never flattened it out. That's a long way up. Talladega is a great example of how all the measurements of a speedway combine to create high-speed racing. Now let's go see what race teams do to make their cars measure up to be competitive out on that track. Every single body and engine part on these machines is carefully calibrated and measured for accuracy. I'm going to talk to Sean. Sean works on race cars. So, Sean, tell me, it, this is called a stock car, and it, it's a Monte Carlo. But I'm wondering, can I run down to the Chevy dealership and buy one of these, turn it into a race car? No, these cars are custom built. Uh, the chassis are custom built. The bodies are custom. There are some, the, the hood and the roof have to fit certain templates of a Monte Carlo. Okay. Everything else on the car is nothing that comes on a Monte Carlo that you would buy at the Chevy dealership. So how do you, how do you arrive at the measurements that you use to build this? NASCAR gives us rules okay. uh, that every body part has to meet. The frame has to meet certain dimensions. Um, and the car is built accordingly. Okay, so it's a certain width, a certain height, a certain weight, all of those things? Yeah, uh, this car here is what we call late model stock. It has to weigh 3,100 pounds with the driver. Well, how do you determine that you've got the proper balance from corner to corner? Percentages, we use uh, the weights, the, the, the total car weight is split down to front weight and rear weight, okay, and for a, a car like this, we usually try to keep it 50-50. Okay, now you have the engine that weighs a lot more than the fuel. Sure. So you have to distribute weight accordingly to get that balanced out. Well, do you have a special instrument you use to determine what those weights are? Yeah, uh, we have uh, scales that we put under the car that we can measure the weight on each tire. That's how we determine oh, okay. what's important is the weight on each tire and when we put the scales on the car, we fill the car up with fuel, the engine's already in the car, then we go and change the weight accordingly to get our balance, what we call a balance setup. I know in a race shop you have all sorts of fun toys to play with, but uh, tell us what kind of things you use for measuring here in a race shop. Well, these are some of the tools just that we would use to set up a race car. Um, these two items here are angle finders. Uh, a lot of angles on the car are very important uh, this is an analog ang angle meter, and this is a digital angle meter. So this is the old school version, and this is the high tech version. Yes. This one would be a lot more precise than that one, I take it. Um, actually, they're about the same. It's just this one's a little bit easier to read, oh, and, okay. and it's, it, it's easier to you know in, interpret what the reading is instead right. of having to look at numbers. Okay. So you have a regular old tape measure. Comes in handy. Yes. Okay. We, every race shop tape measure is one of the most important tools in any race shop. I just can't figure out how to get the clothes. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's a micro micrometer. Yes, these, these are used to measure the diameter of usually circular things. Um, these are used a lot with engines. Engine builders to use these to measure a lot of the very important measurements that it takes to build an engine. Um, yeah, get it right into the right specifications and right yeah, tolerances the, and all the, that kind of thing. The specifications in an engine, the measurements when it comes to building an engine are very important and to the engine being de dependable and running a long time. And all that attention to detail means that the NASCAR races you watch on TV are exciting from the moment the race goes green until the flagman waves a checkered flag. Now this is cool.